You're listening to the Pasco Podcast with Mike Harbala. Welcome to Season 3 of Pasco Podcast, a series about leadership and public service. We'd like to thank our sponsors, the nearly 600,000 people of Pasco County, as represented by the Board of County Commissioners. It's through their trust and empowerment of our workforce and leadership team that we're able to bring you this podcast. This podcast is designed to help public servants build leadership skills and leverage them for success by sharing the experiences of our peers. Hi, I'm Mike Carballa, and welcome to our 42nd episode of Pasco Podcast. Over the years on this podcast, we've introduced you to dozens of people performing local government work, explaining a little of what we do and how we do it. Here in Pasco, we have an even more in-depth program to help you better understand how your local government works to serve our community. It's called the Pasco Citizens Academy, and today, two special guests are here to tell us all about it. Citizens Academy coordinator, Stefania Dewey, and recent Citizens Academy graduate, Connie Luco. Steph, Connie, welcome. How are you guys today? Good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Fantastic. Glad to have you here. So, hey, let's dive right in. Steph, um, in addition to being my awesome executive assistant, uh, you're also uh, run our Citizens Academy. Why don't you talk to us a little bit more about this fantastic program and how it works? Yeah. So Citizens Academy, I'm so proud that we have that in County Admin. Uh, It's an 11 week program. We offer two sort of semesters. So we have a spring and fall semester. And it's an 11-week program, once a week, every Wednesday, typically from 4 to 6.30. And um, wow, you just get to learn so much about everything we do in the organization. So we might you know, just be here on campus at the West Pasco Government Center in the boardroom. We will tour facilities, and you kind of get to see a little bit of everything throughout the county. That's fantastic. Fantastic opportunity. And Connie, congratulations on graduating from from our Citizens Academy recently. Uh, Would you care to talk a little bit about your experience and maybe even your biggest takeaway? Absolutely. Thanks for having me today. Uh, I so appreciate the class. Mm-hmm. Uh, I My biggest takeaways on it was that we got to meet uh, Pasco County representatives and get one on one time with them to voice our concerns or our, you know, complaints, so to speak, I guess, <laughs> uh, some of us. But we d- did a lot in the classes that I I have been in leadership Pasco. I've done other things in the community, very outgoing in the community. And I thought I knew uh, quite a bit about the Pasco County government. I didn't know anything when I first got to the end of the first (laughs) class. I was like, this is amazing. The amount of information that you learn. Um, I, I, the resources out there that you guys provide, the feedback, the you know the libraries, everything right. played a big part. Yeah, in there's a, there's a lot going on, and and again, we, I love your perspective, right? Having having thought you knew some stuff, learned a bunch, and and you've come back out of it. What uh, what surprised you the most about how Pasco County operates? So I guess the when we went to the jail. Uh. Thank gosh I didn't get locked up in there. <laughs> that would not have been pleasant. Uh, I learned that... Uh, you were on six, the right side of the bars, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. When the doors closed, I was a little bit worried about escaping. <laughs> uh, but I learned that the clerk of court, 66% of the funding that you guys get goes back to the state. And I was... Mm-hmm. That played a big part in me because I'm an, an accountant by trade further back. And I, I learned that cases were open for 56 years. That one case was open yeah. and the shortest term was one year. So the amount of information that I learned on a daily basis, I couldn't take enough notes. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. And you know, the program offers a lot of unique access and hands-on mm-hmm. experiences. I'd like you guys just to touch on that a little bit. Uh, maybe, you know, Steph, yeah. you start and then Connie, maybe a little bit of what was memorable to you. Sure. Well, since she Connie mentioned the jail, I mean, yeah. the, these are facilities that are not just readily accessible to the community, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So under normal circumstances. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. If you, right. So, you know, we get to be where the guards are in uh-huh. the jail. I mean, you're mm-hmm. going, I don't recall what those kind of pod areas are, but you are seeing 
Yeah, firsthand, right? I mean, exactly. it's a firsthand accounting. And I, yeah. I know for a lot of people, that's eye-opening. Yeah. And and on top of that, when you learn, I think even towards the end with your budget game, you know, kind of kind of <laughs> opening your eyes too on just the amount of funding that it actually that it actually takes. Um, what about what about you? What was memorable, Connie? I think the wastewater treatment plant, the smell <laughs> was memorable. Uh, I also think the um, the jail as well with the locking uh, the doors behind you and not be, and being able to see parts that you can't see. And then, like you said, I played a county commissioner in the last day, and mm -hmm. it was just what do you pick and choose from what the budget should be. We had some. A lot of, uh, you know, not a consensus at that time. Right, and right. that's what you guys find. And, there, and there's a lot of races. stuff, you know, and that's always the thing at the local at the local government level. Right. That the buck stops, mm -hmm. you know, with with the county commission and they have to kind of make those decisions. And, and I will always say that that county commission impacts you the most. Um, because it's your local government. This yeah. is this is where you see your tax dollars at work. Hopefully, hopefully you see right. it at work, and and um, and it's and it's very difficult because there's not necessarily a lot of a lot of things to cut. Well, all the programs are great. What is it? What is it that we shouldn't be doing? And those are those are questions that you know the public have to ask, and and we look to our county commissioners too to kind of kind of set set that set that guidance. So I'm glad you got such a great experience with it, Steph. Not only do you organize the program, but you're also a graduate of it, um, and you've been with us now. For a little over a year, yeah. how did how did the program change your perspective? Uh, well, I will say that prior to working here, mm -hmm. I had no idea what local government was about. I didn't even know what a county administrator did. So, and I'm assisting one now. <laughs> uh, I'm really glad that I participated shortly into gaining employment. I had this. You know, and being in county admin, I already have a very broad view mm -hmm. of the organization, but this just allowed me to see more in depth about what every department is doing for the community, um, how the constitutional officers fit in with everything, because, you know, I, I before taking it, I wouldn't have even known that like the clerks aren't Pasco County employees. Right. Mm -hmm. Or that the Pasco County School Board, even though it's Pasco County, you know, we all, do the, have the same goals right. and want to serve the community, but we're you know separate entities. Well, they're in separate, sense. separately elected constitutional yep. and officers and and, and definite uh, boards that do different things for folks. Mm -hmm. But I think you're right. I think a lot of us all all see it the same. And of course, even on the development side, you guys you guys hit up on some of the development, some of the yeah. some of the tough decisions that 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 you know uh, board members and and staff and the public and and even land use folks have to kind of make to kind of balance a, a lot of a lot of things that go on in the county. So there's a, there's a lot to it. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not just as simple as is the answer is that yeah. right. there's a lot of gray uh, in the business and we have to sort through it. Mm -hmm. um, so I hear a lot of participants end up forming uh, bonds and, and real friendships. So yeah. talk to us about the camaraderie during this 11 week program. You guys have to kind of form yeah. formulate some well, stuff. I think we there can was. share in this response, but mm -hmm. I tell the participants on night one, you know, it feels like first day of school, <laughs> we're in the boardroom, everybody's spread out. And as we go through the journey together, we really do form connections and friendships. And we're like, you know, one giant family at the end. Mm -hmm. And I think further past that, because on the last day, we're like, oh my gosh, should we get together <laughs> next week for coffee at Wednesday, four o'clock? You know, we just that feeling of, oh, I really enjoyed my time with these people. Um, you know, it's it's just very nice to also be able to network. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, let you maybe carry on I've, being I, a realtor. I have numerous people that have Facebook friended me from the class and we did. It was like, what do we do now on our nights? We're free. And everybody was <laughs> like, we could go for coffee or lunch. I, a lot of them have liked my Facebook page, so we're keeping in touch. Fantastic. The class was amazing, so the good. camaraderie between everybody. We just want more. So... We we got to think of a Citizens Academy 2.0 so we Absolutely. can all get together and do more of this great stuff. Well, and you know, and we continue to build interest uh, in in the program, and we're always looking to grow the program a mm -hmm. little bit. So you know, in ter in terms of getting alumni back together again, that's great. But building new alumni, right, and continuing to push yes. push folks through the class. Any mm -hmm. thoughts on how this program is going to evolve, Steph? Oh, we have a new program manager in county administration, mm -hmm. so I'm graciously passing the baton to Tony Stillo. And um, he's sort of just going to get his feet wet with okay. this upcoming class. And 
you know, we're always looking to the participants to give us honest feedback throughout each session. Let us know how can we make this better? What do you want to, you know, what do you really want to know about? And, <clears throat> and not every class is going to look the same because we strive to evolve the program. If we get new facilities that open up, we might take a tour somewhere else, you know? Right. Um, sometimes we touch on public services at a library and sometimes we're at Go Pasco. So um, it's good to always change it up. Uh, it's nice for me too as a participant, but also leading the class because I got to see venues that I didn't get to see when I participated. So um, yeah, I think also getting the word out there because it's such a great program, and I know a lot of the participants said, I wouldn't have known about it if X, Y, Z. Um, so I'd love to just try to promote that. It's within got to promote the it a little bit more, right? Yeah. Get, it, get it out in advertisement, maybe even get a wait list perhaps on, on the program. I know we have a lot of people that apply, yeah. um, and that's why we do two classes. But boy, you know, if you, you, you could run multiple classes, I mean, it's, it's really a great program. And I, I tell you, having been at the county 10 years now, Citizens Academy um, was was kind of a thing even ten years ago, but boy, we handled it. It was death by PowerPoint on on everything. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of hands on experiences. It was more explaining government from our perspective, from a departmental perspective. And I think you've helped evolve it into explaining it. To, what does it do for citizens? Yeah. And here's how this works. And and I can tell you, I, I see the difference. So hats off to you guys. And I, I'm sure Tony and they're going to take that baton and and run it and make it even better. So that's that's just what we do here. I mean, imagine if. We we had to go to the wastewater treatment plant and just sit in a room and hear a presentation, but we actually got to tour it. And when we went to the energy plant, we got to put the hard hats on and the equipment right. and and go right into where all the machines are operating. Yeah. And it's so much more fascinating than sitting in your typical teaching environment where you're just hearing Click. information. Excellent. And some people do right. really well. Some we do have a mix up. We yeah. have some classes where it is presentation heavy. And mm -hmm. for those who love PowerPoints, it's awesome. And then for those who need to kind of get up and mm -hmm. move and that's how they retain the information, it's, it's a great mix. Yeah, well, that's, that's great. That is great. So, you know, we're talking about expanding it. Uh, talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, who should apply mm -hmm. uh, to take part in this program and what's the time commitment like? Yeah, so the short answer is anybody who lives and or works in Pasco okay. should do it. Um, you know, lives I, or works then, right? So yeah. I could still live so, in Hillsboro, but if I work mm -hmm. in Pasco, that's okay. Yeah. All right, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, we've had participants who have just been unhappy with how the county works or their perspective mm. of things. And they join Citizens Academy and get to really understand, you know, where are our taxpayers dollars going to mm -hmm. and um, why are we getting additional taxes and what is this department for and and why does why do we have these additional MSTUs that are coming out and getting to hear from the directors and these departments kind of explaining this is what we do this is why we need more funding um, I think that gives participants such a greater understanding right mm -hmm. and we live here and we work here and and I always saw ignorance is bliss. I mean, I'm the least political person. <laughs> um, so I think knowing just as somebody who also lives in Pasco of what's happening in our community, I just think it's wonderful. It's such an, a great educational tool that is free. Mm -hmm. Your time commitment is, you know, once a week, two and a half hours. If you can get out of work a little bit early, there's going to be things that come up, obviously, where you might have to miss a session or two, and that's okay. Um, but it's this is really for your benefit of just learning more about where you work and play. Fantastic. Connie, what about you? Anything to add to that? I think she said it all. <laughs> Steph's amazing. And yeah. the, the whole class was amazing. I think the amount of information uh, that really threw me is what the departments actually do mm -hmm. that I didn't know. Right. But I think it should be out there everywhere as a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. You really need to get every real estate agent in here. They're buying and selling in Pasco County and they need to be involved yeah. to know what's going on. 
going on. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to throw Mike Wells under the bus. He does our orientation <laughs> at the board and he should probably bring it up there. I think a lot of people would be interested yeah, in it. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's great. Hey, you guys heard and you worked alongside a lot of, you know, we, we just talked about it, right? Directors and leaders in the county, right? And so mm -hmm. um, both at the constitutional level, departmental level, um, any leadership takeaways maybe that you'd learn by how these folks are managing uh, their their departments or their specific areas. Just, uh, you know, we try to talk about leadership on this podcast a little bit. So just any takeaways from a leadership perspective? Well, I think from a leadership perspective, uh, you know, sitting through a lot of the commissioner meetings mm -hmm. ahead of time, I, I kind of, you, you know, you, you don't like them to begin with. Not that I don't like them. It's just some of the things that they do you don't like and you're discouraged. Here you were allowed to ask questions and find out the true meaning of what they do. Mm -hmm. So in leadership, I, I think it changed my mind a little bit about the leadership that we have at the county. Okay. As far as leadership in outside. In a positive way. In a positive, in a positive way. way. Okay. Absolutely. Just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the more you get involved with the county, the more you understand, like Steph yeah. said. Uh, it's just, a, it was a positive. Yeah, I think once we we pause and try to understand each other, I, I think we, everyone sees it, you know, and sometimes we, even in government, need to remember to see things from the citizen's perspective and mm -hmm. the citizens from, you know, their commissioners or their oh, government's yeah. perspective. And that's, I mean, we all work for each other. I mean, ultimately, ultimately, we work for the people and, and right. the citizens. And so that government should be reflective of, of that. And it's just great that we uh, we, we can get together and, and learn and, and understand the, the nuances. How about yeah. you, Steph? Uh, well, we got to hear from Chairman Oakley for quite some we time did. on our last visit. We mm -hmm. went to the historic Dade City Courthouse, which is absolutely stunning and where we have our some of our board meetings once a month. And man, he spent so much quality time with us and talked to us about, you know, sort of his philosophy and what he wants for the community. And he represents District 1. And so he's got a lot of land, right? And he will I, remind you that that is half the county. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but the districts are, mm. are split up. They are balanced in terms of population. population. That yeah. is correct. So he that does, um, you know, explain that he's got a lot of land and of course the county is developing so much but just his based on that his philosophy that we're all working together mm -hmm. for the same purpose so even though he's assigned to district one and you know he wants that district to thrive he wants all of pasco to thrive and mm -hmm. i think that is something that we see a lot across leadership right i mean you you're you have one little team and in the organization we have our divisions our departments right. Um, but we're all working together for the greater good, and we're all doing what we can to serve the community. So. Yeah, yep. serving our community to create a better future. That's uh, what we do. I think one takeaway uh, to piggyback on what Steph said is yeah. that I, I would have liked to have seen more county commissioners what we as citizens can help them do out in the community or bring awareness to what they're facing or what they're doing. Hearing it from every one of them would have been a nice takeaway. And sure. we are going to, that is one of the parts of the program that we're going to improve upon. Okay. Um, we're going to make sure that each session is on the commissioner's calendars. So if they want to just do a casual drop in, like we saw Commissioner Starkey on night mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. or, you know, if they just want to be more involved, just like Chairman Oakley was, I think that's really nice. I mean, it was that he spent, he stayed really late with us and how nice for the participants to just have this one on one personal time with the commissioner and having them all present would be nice too. Mm -hmm. Well, I know they're excited about it. Commissioner mm -hmm. Starkey will, will will often. I mean, she's the one I think that actually brought the program uh, mm -hmm. to to Pasco County. I know Chairman Oakley and and all of our commissioners for that matter love to interact mm -hmm. with the citizens. And I'm sure as you learn, they all have office hours, so anytime. And I know they're yeah. accessible. <laughs> um, you know, um, you know, you mm -hmm. can you can go and meet with them. And so yeah, scheduling is always is always kind of a tough is kind of a tough thing. But right. uh, we uh, we will we'll continue to work on that and make this thing better. Anything else, guys? You'd like to add about about Pasco Citizens Academy? I just get a flyer out there, spread okay. the word. <laughs> yeah, we really need to to get more people involved. Yeah, I well, agree. Good. I, I hope they stay though. We had a lot of people start the class that didn't finish yeah. the class, and it takes away from the people that do. I think but that it's tends amazing. to be from what from what I've experienced is that 
people really want to go through this and they think, okay, you know, I can, I, my job's flexible enough or schedules change mm -hmm. or maybe the job's not as flexible as I thought it would be. And they, <clears throat> they just say, you know, I wish I could keep going, but I can't. Um, that tends to be a lot more of what we're seeing. So we've, you know, thought about ideas of different time starts, maybe mm -hmm. making it a little bit more easy for people to like get out of work and make it to the right, sessions on right. time. There's just a lot that goes into the planning and mm -hmm. and strategic, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. We, we, we were such a small knit group though, and how nice was it that yeah, it we was. got more quality time and all the questions that were asked, we might they have been were there like yeah. four yeah. hours over if we yeah. had double. We never stayed until 6.30. It yeah. was always 7, 7.30, almost 8 o'clock. It was great. I even brought my laptop to one of them. I told you I had to step out for a board meeting. So I stepped out in the hall and came back in. I didn't want to miss anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. I know. And appreciate your advocacy. Appreciate, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your participation. And hopefully this podcast can maybe serve as a, as a little bit of a teaser for those. So I guess you can you can post it and repost it, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Up there, Connie. I tell so, my kids I'm on TV. Yeah, now. there you go. There you go. So I guess uh, real quick, I just like to hit a little bit of a lightning round oh, with with gosh. everybody here. And it's, oh, it's this is easy stuff. Easy stuff. <laughs> nothing. 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 Here, we'll warm you up. First job, Steph. What was your first job? I worked at Winn Dixie bagging groceries. Winn Dixie, love it. I worked at Kroger's bagging Hi. groceries. Kroger's. Yeah. So we got two grocery baggers here. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Favorite ice cream, Connie? Uh, peanut butter and chocolate. Yum. From Baskin Robbins. Oh. Step. And I love chocolate ice cream with brownie pieces. And it's my chocolate, on chocolate. chocolate on chocolate. <laughs> All right, that is that is awesome. Uh, tropics or mountains? Mm. Both equally, but probably tropics. Tropics. All right. I'd probably say mountains. Mountains. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love it. Summer or winter? winter. Doesn't have to be Florida. <laughs> winter. Oh, winter. God, okay. Yeah. Uh, winter here. Summer. Uh, summer somewhere else. Yeah. Summer yeah. somewhere else. <laughs> I actually love winter time in the mountains or mm -hmm. going up north to see my family. So awesome. Yeah. Favorite holiday stuff? Christmas. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Okay. Love it. Love it. Um, one place you want to visit? Hmm, that's a tough one. I've already been to Hawaii. That would have been my top one, but probably I'm a family oriented person. So I would be Pennsylvania. Back Pennsylvania, home. back home. That. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Ireland is at the top of my bucket list. Ireland. I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Steph, Connie, thank you so much for uh, being here today and to help promote Citizens Academy. So now you know, and we'd love for you to join us for an upcoming session. Applying is really easy. Just visit our website, mypasco.net, and search Academy. There you'll find more information and an online application form. We hope to see you soon, and thanks for joining us on this episode of Pasco Podcast. I'm Mike Carballa, and we'll see you next time. For more information on Pasco County government, please visit mypasco.net.